Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. What we're going to do guys today is show you how to plaster this beat up old wall. Now this wall, the fellows on the house at Kirk, can you guys waterproof that with a waterproof cement? And I said, yeah, they do make a waterproof cement. Uh, paper has deteriorated over the whole house. You see it had about 20, 30 paint jobs, but they did the best they could with what they have. Every time someone buys it, it's their responsibility now to take over where the last guy left off. Anyway, um, we're trying to beat the rains. We've had nothing but rains. Uh, it's been one of the wettest rainy seasons in, I don't know, 20 years. So what we do first, guys, to match this, this is kind of like a swirl finish. Uh, uh, um, a weird finish. Anyway, we're going to scratch it. And now... There's a lot of ways to do this, guys. You could scratch it, like say here. I'm scratching it. What scratch me? That's the first coat of stucco. Now that first coat of stucco is put on there. This, this mud is a little bit tight, but that's okay. I think what I'll do is improvise because it's tight. I'll go over my own scratch immediately. And can we do that? Of course we can. Get it up there, get it to adhere in that joint. Then what we do is, for the sake of just showing you guys, not going around the whole house and boring you, the crap out of you. I know, some of you are thinking too late. I'm gonna double this up right here. Okay, doubling it up. What I've got is accumulation of about, oh, um, an inch to an inch and a half. So what we do is I take our screen, clean it, take it up, and just kind of match what we have here. And by the way, next week we will be doing waterproof stucco. As for a fellow whose basement flooded. How many of you guys have had a basement flood? On our block we've had about six people move out because their basement's flooded, and that's where a lot of residents were. Again, we're at five weeks of heavy rain. So, uh, with that interior cement we're gonna do next week, that's another story. I'll show you guys real quick, just one area, because we don't wanna go around the house. We're trying to beat the rain, it's supposed to rain this evening. Why would we do this? Because they want us to do it tonight, or today, or as soon as possible. Okay, you look at that finish there. First, take your joint. Feather that joint in. You kind of feather that joint in best as possible, guys. Now, what we do is, you can do this two ways, guys. Take some mud here. Now, for this, it's a little, you see these? These are called slobbers. Slobbers. What, how do you create a slobber? Same way you do <laughs> if you're spitting. You have it excess wet. So, that's pretty wet. This is not so wet. You can do it two ways, guys. You can look at it and go, gee, that's pretty thick as it is, and take the toe or your heel and just dig it in. Um, okay, look at theirs. Those are kind of half moons. Some of them are vertical. Some of them are horizontal. So what we want to do is kind of match that right there and just squeeze it, guys. Squeeze it <laughs> kind of like that. And what you do is you let that set. Now, you see, they got a little bit more slobbers. So if you wanted, you could add a little bit and see how that slobbers out right there. You could add a little bit and slobber it. And there you have it, guys. Now, this is going to take about, oh, I'd give it a half hour, and it'll set. And when it sets, then we take the transition here. I'll show you with uh, a handy-dandy float. We take the float here. Tap all that water out. Get all that excess water out. I'm looking at the sky thinking, man, we got at least six hours before the rain starts coming. Anyway, this is a fast setting, rapid set uh, stucco. So you could do same day uh, and it'll harden as fast as we want it to. We control the set or the retardants or the accelerators. Anyway, now this is kind of heavy right here where it meets this. And this is smooth. Why? This transition has been painted about maybe 20 times in the last hundred years. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna force this 
Meaning, okay, this joint right here, it's, it's gritty. When this dries in about a half hour, 15 and a half hour, then you just take it and you hit it real light. And you feather in the transition. Feather in the transition with the same, the same thought, the same theory in mind of uh, look at these and try to blend them right into it. This right here, the float, will get you, will get you pretty good, pretty tight. And if you find it's too sandy, don't be afraid to take a trowel and get some of that grit out. You just follow your same patterns, guys. And again, this, this doesn't have a pattern. It's just every which way. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to let this set up a little bit and then um, finish it off. All right, guys, this is another way to do it. Multiple ways to do it. Endless. All right, Jay already scratched this whole wall here. Now, the scratch is set up a little bit. And this mud here is a little bit soupier. It has a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is just brown this out. Okay. Brown it out. All right, get your bottom, chew it out, get it kind of right where you want it, do your corner, make that corner, I was going to say ugly, but we don't use that term. Make it match what they have. All right, now that we got that done, now look at these. These are more um, uh, vertical. They kind of go upward, like from, say, 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock. They kind of start here, and then they all stop about there. Uh, but it, it's got a lot going on here, guys. It's kind of easy to match. You just, you take what you already have here and just take a little bit of excess mud. Now, I'm going to follow this particular pattern. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to follow that particular pattern. Now we have them going vertical. You add more if you need it, guys. You'll know if you need it because it won't, it won't achieve these little slobbers. So that kind of is it. And like I did on the other side, I'm waiting for that to set because the transition can't be this sandy. But that's another half hour. We're back. Now, we got rained out that one day. I thought we might uh, look clear. Next thing you know, it was pouring down rain. After we got soaked to the skin and protected the walls as much as possible, we're back today. And I'm looking at it. I thought, dang, we didn't do too bad. Um, I was telling the homeowner, I said, well, when we apply this, what we're doing is we're putting stucco. Stucco is what? Sand and cement. Concrete, rocks in Portland cement. Same stuff, but this got rocks, this got sand. You're going to see the sand when we pull it up. Now, generally, what we do is on something like this, where we see that it's, the house has been about, oh, you look at it, paint scraping off every which way. I'd say a 90-year-old house with about 20, 30 coats of paint, and most of it's coming off. This is smoothed out by a lot of paint. So I told the fellow here, I said, paint it twice with some kind of a really thick quality primer and paint like Sherwin-Williams, Kelly Moore, Benjamin Moore, and roll this out. You roll it out with a heavy nap roller. That way you smooth this out just a little bit. Is it going to fix the transition to make it look brand like you can't see it? I can see every transition ever done, including my own. So I'm going to point out something. Here's what we did today. We spent about 10 minutes now, and I just went around, and we're, what we're doing is we're scraping off some of the uh, stucco, because stucco has sand, guys. Interior plastering does not have sand. So you can make interior plastering like glass, but if you think you're going to smooth out exterior stucco that has even felt in or only sand, you got another thing coming. Anyhow, we've, we've had record-breaking temperatures of rain, and <laughs> yeah, we got rained out. We're actually thinking about not coming today, but I wanted to see what the heck we left here. I'll tell you what I like to do, folks. I talked to the owner and I said, you see this patch here? And he says, what patch? Hello? I said, this patch. I said, you, you can see all this heavy sand, can't you? Uh, they did something here and then this heavy sand, the, tr the transition. That's going to be something like what we're going to leave. So these guys didn't do such a bad job. It's just they didn't scrape it down like so. Anyway, I'm going to show you on this other side something where uh, you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about because the transition here is tight. It's about as tight as we can get it. And we've been doing this a long time, guys. But we're only as good as what we have to work with. 
Uh, I'm going to take you over here because I want to just prove a point. <coughs> when I was talking to the homeowner at first, I said, look, man, we're as good as the next guy, if not better, but we're only as good as what we have to work with. I got to tell everybody that. I said, you see all these patches? <laughs> they said, what patches? I said, hello, man, right here. You can't see that patch, this patch, this one. Does it, can the camera take a close up? Um, anyway, these patches right here. I said, these are, that's sand, and these guys tried their best to match it. They could have done better. we done a little bit better, but we're only as good as what we have to work with. So he says, well, I can barely see that. And I thought, I like that answer. So we'll give you something that is going to be a lot better. The transition here is much smoother. And that's only because we allowed it to dry. Then we came back. You could use a, a wet brush, a trowel, anything, but allow it to dry and then handle it like this. There's some other work they did on the other side, but I don't want to show that because people will say, gee, you're using that to show how bad it can be. But since we're right here, I was talking to the owner. I said, now look at this wall here. I said, do you see this? And he says, what about it? I said, can you see the three different finishes? He says, I see two. I said, okay, I'll show you one. This is a similar finish to what he had, except it's been text coated. How do you know it's text coated? That's a spray-on finish. You could see it all over the pipe there. That's where they spray it on. This is a float finish. That means they gave it their best shot, and didn't, the two didn't match because they didn't put the swirls in here. And then I said, well, you see this one? He said, which one? <laughs> I said, Ben, you can't see that. So they just did a patch here, and they put little pancakes here. And he says, I don't notice it. And I thought, okay, um, because what we're doing is, again, we're only as good as what we have to work with. And yeah, the, all these rains and floods, how many of you guys got rained out on some of your jobs lately? I haven't seen this much rain in ever. It's so compacted in, say, four months. But anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. I thought we'd show you and explain it into detail because folks just don't get it as far as priming it twice when you have something of this kind of nature. We thank you for watching, and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the videos that we put out, please like and subscribe so that we can keep making these videos for everybody. And as always, from the, from the entire, entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.